Thank you, Bishop. You may be seated. I believe your bishop is the, the best pastor in the whole world. Come on, give that up to him. Yeah. They are pastors and they are pastors. So, and I, I hope you know what you've got. Hold him tight and his wife, Pastor Alice. God bless you. Thank you for the invitation. Amen. I also want to introduce my wife. I believe she's the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Why are you upset? You can say that about your wife too. I'd like her to stand up. Rosemar, will you stand up and say hi? God bless you. Amen. Bring you greetings. And um, I'm here with um, some members of my church. Um, Larry and uh, Sue, will you stand up and wave them at them? Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be here from, bring you greetings from Canada. It's, it's been awesome. God has been doing some wonderful things with us back there. Like Bishop said, we have over 106 nations gathered, which is the highest in the world. And it's been a phenomenon. It's been by the grace of God. Today, this afternoon, I should say this morning, I would like to contribute to, I want to preach on a passage I've, I have not really preached on before. But interestingly, that's been your theme on the kingdom manifestation. So if you don't mind, I would like God put this word on my heart to share with you. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I want to read verses 31 to 33. Jesus said, do, therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And then he said, but seek first. Somebody says, seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. That's what the Bible says. Seek first the kingdom of God. I've been meditating on this small verse, but seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. I want to use as a subject this morning, what matters most. I want you to write the title down. What matters most? What matters most? We need to ask ourselves what is most important to us. What is most important to you will drive you. Every one of us, we need to have a certain philosophy of life. Every one of us must have a philosophy. Your philosophy will drive you, will determine how it will affect your choices. If you have a bad philosophy, you have a bad lifestyle. For example... A lady who is not married will have a philosophy. I'm not going to sleep with a man before I get married. That is a good philosophy of life. There are also men who, some men who have got bad philosophy. They said, I'm not going to marry a woman unless I sleep with her first. When you ask them why, you say, Pastor, how can you buy a car without taking it for a drive test or a test drive? And I tell them, Women are not Honda Civic or Toyota Corolla. They are made in the image of God and they are children of God. If you are looking for a Honda Civic, you go to a park lot and buy a Honda Civic. Ladies, tell your neighbor, I'm not a Honda Civic. <laughs> tell the next person, I'm not available for a test drive. <laughs> what is your philosophy? What do you live for? What matters most to you? Jesus says it all here. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added to you. I see three principles here. I want to live with you, if you don't mind, to contribute, my small contribution to kingdom manifestation. Kingdom life. As we end this year, I want to remind you, there are three things about the kingdom of God 
that must be your principle. Principle number one, I want you to write it down. You need to set priorities. You need to set priorities. That's what he said. Every person needs to have priorities in life because if you don't have priorities, you will do so many things. We have only 24 hours. We can only do the things that matters most. Everybody has 24 hours. So when you wake up, you have to set your priority. What is important for me to do? Let me tell you what I do every morning. Because I can do a million things as a pastor. But when I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, what am I going to do today that will last forever? That's what matters most. Everything else will be secondary. You got to make the major things major and the minor things minor. Jesus said in the first part of this verse, Matthew 6, 33, seek first. Your first priority is the kingdom of God. Everything you do is secondary. When you wake up in the morning, you must ask yourself, am I going to seek first the kingdom? You say, but what does that mean? Let me break it. Number one, I want you to write it down. They all start with the letter P so that you can remember. One, passion. When the Bible means, what the Bible means by the kingdom of God? It means God must first and foremost be your passion. Everything else that you love must be secondary. My house might be secondary. Even my wife might be secondary. The car I drive might be secondary. First and foremost, you must love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your spirit. That is kingdom life. Seek first the kingdom. That means that first and foremost, I must love God with everything within me. If you are not loving God with all your heart and all your soul, you are not living kingdom life. God said that if anybody does not hate his father and mother more than me, more if, if he doesn't hate them, yes, then they are not worthy of me. What does he mean hate them? You know, in other words, they, your love for God has to be so deep compared to your mother or father and maybe hate. If you don't love me more than you love your husband or wife, Jesus said, you are not worthy of me. My wife, when we got married, I understood that. I understood she loved Jesus. And I'll always be number two. And that's okay with me. She told me that God comes first in my life. And that is supposed to be every one of us, our priority. You know why? So that one day if I tell my wife, I don't love you anymore like some hot and foolish pastors can do. You know, one pastor told me, I, I need to upgrade. The way God has blessed me, this my wife has brought me so far, I need a younger wife. Bishops do that. People do that. When you were poor, your wife was with you, now God has given you some small money, now you want to upgrade to a younger lady, may God forgive you. You love the person that God has given you to the end. But first and foremost, if I walk away from my wife, she knows I've always been the second. She will go back to her Jesus. Her life is not rooted in me. So if I leave her, her life will not come to an end. Some of you, your boyfriend leaves you and you want to commit suicide. It's because your boyfriend is your life. Paul said in Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. You must live your life for Jesus. He also said, I am crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 3, no more I live, but the life I live, I live through the power of Jesus. Christ must be your first. So that if your girlfriend said, I'm leaving, you said, Quahere. You are not the number one in my life. You are always number two. So if number two leave, guess what? Number one is still available. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will love you with an everlasting love. When Christ is your passion, then you don't run after other things. Am I speaking to somebody? Number one, 
first the kingdom. That means that your passion. Number two, that means your purpose. What do you mean, pastor? You must live your life for God, not for people. Every one of you have God has a plan and a purpose for you. You are not on earth here just to occupy space. If you are not fulfilling your purpose, you are going to be unhappy. You are going to feel frustrated. You are going to feel something is missing in your life. Some of you think your purpose in life is to get to a degree, get a wife, buy an apartment, have little children around you, and then die. That's not your purpose. What is your purpose? You need to ask God, why am I alive? You are alive for something bigger than that. God has a plan for you. He said, I know the plans I have for you. When you are not fulfilling God's plans in your life, you are always going to feel something is missing. You may think it's a wife. Maybe because I don't drive a Mercedes Benz. Maybe because I don't drive a Volvo. Why I'm unhappy is because you are not fulfilling your purpose. You see, when you are not fulfilling your purpose, you are unhappy and everybody, person around you is going to be unhappy. When Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he asked God two questions. He said, who are you, Lord? That addresses the question of passion. You have to find God and you have to love him with all your heart and all your soul. If you don't love God, you are never going to be happy. And I say, all, I say it all the time in Canada. You see, North Americans, we are the richest continent on earth. We have everything, and yet we are the, the most unhappy people. Do you know that one out of every three persons is depressed in North America? You know what that tells me? Money cannot make you happy. Buildings cannot satisfy you. Your real issue is to come and love God. You are most happy when you love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your spirit. That's what makes you most happy, not things. Kingdom of God first means that you have to love God. Number two, you have to fulfill. Paul said, who are you, Lord? And then he said, what will you have me to do? Every one of us, we need to ask that question before we pass on. Why am I here for? Those are questions that have baffled philosophers for many generations. Philosophers always have asked three questions. Who am I? That has to do with identity. Why am I here? It addresses the question of purpose. Those of you who are in school, studying philosophy, you know what I'm talking about. Who am I? Identity. Why am I here? Purpose. And where am I going? Destination. Every person needs to ask those, two, those three questions. Questions that philosophers have wrestled with. But the Bible has an answer. Hallelujah. Who am I? You are a child of God, made in the image of God. Why am I here? God has a plan and a purpose for you. Find it. Where am I going? You are either going to heaven or you're going to hell. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. After death, there is judgment. He said, but pastor, I don't believe in that. I believe when you die, you can come back as a mosquito or a house fly. You believe in that. I have not met anybody yet who said I was a mosquito last month and I died, I've come back as a, what, a zebra or uh, what are the, the big five? A rhino or a lion or you know what, what I mean. The Bible says when you die, you die once. After death, there's, I've not met anybody who has come back the second time. Love God. Kingdom first, meaning passion, meaning purpose. It also means proclamation. What do I mean? You have to share the word of God. When I wake up every morning, I need to ask myself, am I loving God with all my heart? Am I fulfilling my purpose, why I'm here? If you're a child of God, you don't know why you are here, you better pray. Because when we stand before God, God is going, not going to ask you, how many apartments do you, do you have? He's going to ask you, did you love me with all your heart? Did you fulfill your purpose? Did you share the gospel with others? Lord, I want to be a witness. He said, you are the salt of the earth. He said, you are the light of the earth. When you go out, you got to share the gospel. If God has been good to you and you are a testimony, tell somebody. Do you hear me? If God has been a good to you and you are a testimony, go out there and tell somebody. 
when I wake up in the morning, I want to ask, these are my priorities. And number four priority, kingdom means that you have a paradise. In other words, I am going somewhere. I'm going to heaven. Sometimes we forget that we are here for a short while. Some of us live like we are going to be here forever. You not. That's the bad news. Let me tell you, in about 40 years, most of us in this room will not be alive. Just 40 years. Life is very short. The Bible says it's like a flower. It blows on and it's no more. It's like a vapor that rises and is gone. We don't live on this planet too long. Do you know that? I remember when I was a kid. I remember when I used to play soccer. Before I knew it, I've lost my hair. What's happening? I'm growing. You know, when I was a kid, I used to jump out from bed and I'm running. Now I have to plan. Can I get a witness? In the morning, I have to plan. I have to tell my leg, it's now time to step on the floor. If I step with that preparation, I will fall down. My, my, my feet can no more hold my body like it used to. Can I get a witness? Even when you go to a washroom, you have to plan. Things don't come easily. But God is good. Amen. We are not here for a long time. You are here today, tomorrow you are gone. 70 years compared to eternity is nothing. How you live your life in this short while, that's all that it is. Going to determine how you're going to live your life. I don't know, I can't promise you that all of us are going to go to heaven. I cannot promise you because the Bible says many people are not, are not going to make it to heaven. I know you are quiet. That's true. Read the Bible. The Bible says only few people are in heaven. A lot of people go to hell. You got to live your life principle like you are not, you are a stranger here. Don't try to acc accommodate, accumulate too much property thinking that this is where I'm living. You are not here forever. You have to live like the Bible talks about Abraham, Hebrews chapter 11. By faith he dwelled in the land of promise, as in a foreign country. God told him, this is the promised land. This is the land I will give you. But yet, when Abraham went there, he said, I am a temporary visitor. I'm only here for a while. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might not be able to drive a Mercedes Benz, but that's okay. This is not my town. I'm only passing through. Oh, can I get an amen? I may not be able to live in a mansion, but don't forget, this is not your home. You are passing through. Your home where you are going, the Bible says the street is paved with gold. Wait till you see my mansion in heaven. You're going to be jealous. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you, in my father's house it are many apartments. No, no, no. Are many mansions. Seek ye first. When you have eternity in your mind, it changes the way you live. You can't get involved with unnecessary quarrels or fight. Nothing will bother you. Everything else is superficial. Sometimes people come to me and they are troubled about what that person said and what that person is saying about them. In view of eternity, that is just foolishness. I'm going somewhere. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It means I have to love God with a passion. It means I have to fulfill my purpose. It means I have to proclaim the kingdom of God. It means I have to always have heaven in mind. This is not my kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Amen? So sometimes don't get too anxious. See, Jesus said, don't be bothered. What you eat, what you wear, what you drive, don't be bothered. But rather... Set priorities. Remember who you are as a child of God. Sometimes we forget that we are kingdom children. We don't belong here. When I see somebody driving an airplane, I don't jealous them. 
That is their kingdom. I'm only passing through. They can drive their airplane here and they can still go to hell. But I am going to heaven. My kingdom is coming. And when my kingdom comes, the Bible says God will reward me. The Bible says I will cast our crowns before him. I will dwell in my mansion. Don't forget that. It will help you also to go through trials and tribulations. Seek ye first. Set your priorities. The kingdom of God. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul said, If you then were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. When Christ with our life appears, then you also will appear with them. See, sometimes we get so focused on the here and now. When Jesus Christ was telling us about the second coming of Christ, you know what he said? He said, remember lost wife. It's one of the shortest verses in the Bible. Why does he say that? Because sometimes we focus on the material, we forget the spiritual. We're going home. For some of you, it could be tonight. Or in two weeks, you could be gone home. And all your life, you have wasted it chasing after secondary things. Seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? Number two principle, you have to seek purity. It is not enough just to seek the kingdom. You have to seek purity. He says this in the next verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's righteousness. One of the things that have baffled me about us Africans, we love God so much and yet our lifestyle is something else. Is something else. When I first went to Canada, I noticed something. When you go to the petrol stations, there's nobody there. You go there and you pump the petrol yourself and you can choose to pay or not to pay. Nobody is there. I went there, I'm like, what is this? This can never happen in Ghana. <laughs> I should pump and then I can go and pay I will pump and drive away. Now I'm talking about a country that Christians are only about 4%. And yet it works. But it will not work in Africa where Christians are about 67%. You know why? We don't live in righteousness. Let me give you an example. Those of you who are from Nigeria, I hope you can forgive me. I come from West Africa, so I know a lot about West Africa. There are more Christians in Nigeria than any other country in Africa. And yet, there are more corruption in Nigeria than any other country in Africa. Why? There is a disconnect. Because we, you and I, we go to church on a Sunday, and we don't leave, we live another life on Monday. People are saying police officers are corrupt, but they go to church. Every person is corrupt, but we go to church. There is a disconnect between what we say and how we live. I was sharing in the first service, a lady came to me one day and said to me, Pastor, I heard you preaching, your preaching it was troubling me. I am I'm a mother of a single child. There is a man who is married, who is taking care of us. He's brought me an apartment, takes care of us. Once a while, he would demand some sex, and that's it. But I'm part of my church. Is there something wrong with it? And I realize that it's a lifestyle that a lot of Christians live. I said, you are a child of God, and you are prostituting yourself. He said, no, not exactly. Not exactly. Not exactly. Maybe once a while. But, but God has used him to give me a breakthrough. He's given me a testimony. You can come to church on a Sunday 
And you can still be sleeping around and you think it's okay. It is not okay. You are not living in righteousness. When Jesus comes, you're going to be surprised. You're going to say, God, what happened to me? I was tightening. I was going to church. Romans chapter 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. God has called us to live a certain lifestyle. Can I get a witness? The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Everything has become new. In other words, you don't become a Christian just be because you want to get rich. If that's why you're in church, you're in the wrong place. Maybe get into the matatu business. You can get money quickly. But if you're in Christ because you want God to change your life and, gives you a, and give you a future, then you're in the right place. But many times, churches will stop preaching about righteousness. Most churches you go, it's about what you get, what you get, what you get, what God will get. And Jesus said, don't worry about these things. Focus on your life. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. He said, what shall a man exchange for his soul? How much are, are, are you worth? What is your breaking point? At what point will you compromise your lifestyle for money? That's what Jesus meant. And I told this woman, you need to return the apartment. You need to return his money. And you, and you, you, you need to tell him, I am now born again. I cannot be your mistress anymore. I am a child of God. Then she said to me, are you serious? I'm going to be homeless. I say, you better be homeless and go to heaven or live in an apartment and go to hell. There is a price to pay for living a righteous life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, Matthew 5 10, he said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? Listen to me, my friends. To live a righteous life will come with a price. Now, this is a point at the service where everybody gets quiet. To live a righteous life, there is a price to pay. The Bible calls it suffering for Christ. Some of you, if you live a righteous, non-corrupt life, you may not be able to afford the car that you drive. You may not be able to afford the apartment where you live in if you live righteous life. But even if it means you have to drive a motorbike just to live righteously, give up your Volvo, so be it. There is a price to pay for living righteously. Let me tell you, Joseph refused to sleep with her, his mistress and he spent 17 years of his life in jail. There is a price. But are you ready to pay the price? If you are not ready to pay that price, then you are not ready to follow Jesus. He said, if anybody wants to come after me, let him take up his own cross. Carry your cross and follow me. There is a price. Some men will never marry you or give you, engage you if you don't sleep with them. By all means, be single the rest of your life than compromise. Tell them you have a principle. Tell them you are a kingdom daughter. You don't compromise your righteousness. If it means I'm not going to marry the rest of my life, so let it be. Oh, I didn't get an amen. This is kingdom life. Set your priorities. Let the kingdom of God be your life. Why? You want to go to heaven. Matthew chapter 7 says, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are few who find it. And he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. 
Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Cast demons in your name. That many wonders in your name. And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from you, you who practice lawlessness. You see, going to a church that don't make you a Christian, much as sleeping in your garage makes you a car. Does it? Sleeping in your garage does not make you a car. You can come to church all the way you want. It doesn't make you a Christian. You have to live in righteousness. And today, some of you, I'm going to give you opportunity just to do that. Are you hearing me? What matters most in life? Set your priorities. Live a kingdom life. Number two, live a life of purity. And then I will assure you the third one as I close. God said you will, you will secure your prosperity. You will secure your prosperity. He said when you live a life for my glory, the third thing will happen. He says he will take care of you. Let's go back to the verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. God said, I know you need a car. He said, I know you need a house. He said, I know you need a place to sleep. I know you need a husband. He said, I know you need a shoe. I know you need a makeup. I know you need a new suit. He said, but get your priorities right. What have I said this morning? Seek first the kingdom of God. Priority. Make God number one in your life. Invest in the things that matters most. Number two, and his righteousness. Live a life of purity. Some of you are here this morning. You need to break with certain relationships. There is a man, a woman in your life. There's a certain lifestyle you are leading. Maybe there are businesses you are involving in that is not right. Today, you need to make a decision to make it right if you want to go to heaven. Purity. And number three, God said he will prosper you. Oh, David said, I have been old and now I have been young and I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. When you live right, God will reward you. When you live righteously, God will never forsake you. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He will make you to lie down by the green pastures. He knows you, you need it. He said, he will bring you by the still waters. Sometimes we have got it all wrong. We seek after other things with the hope that we will find the kingdom. No. Seek first the kingdom. Live your life for God. Live your life for Jesus. Say, my body is the temple of God. God has placed me here to live a life of purity, of holiness. I am married. I cannot be sleeping with somebody else. I cannot. I am a child of God. Joseph had a principle like that. And his mistress wanted to sleep with him. He said, how can I do this to God? I have a principle. Unlike David, who went and took somebody's wife, Joseph refused. And he ended up in jail. Spent almost half of his life paying for the price of righteousness. Let me ask you this morning. Are you ready to pay the price? One day somebody came to Jesus and said, I want to enter the kingdom. I really want to come. Jesus said, really? He said, yeah. He said, go and sell everything. Come and follow me. The Bible says he left sorrowfully. He could not pay the price. He chose material things over destiny. Can I ask you the same question? What is it in your life that can hinder you from entering into the kingdom of God. Are you ready to pay the price? I have decided to pay the price. No matter what. 
Even if they have to cut off my head, I will still stay for Jesus. I will never compromise my faith. I will never, you, you lock me up with, with a woman in the room for 20 years, I will come out. Because my mind is made up. I have decided to follow Jesus. I am not turning back. The cross before me, the word behind me. You know why? Listen to me. You've been it all, you've done it all. The world has nothing for you. The world has nothing for you. There's nothing in the world that will satisfy you. So you got to make up your decision today. I know God is speaking to you right now. And I want you to bow down your head right now, every one of us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added to you. In a moment, I'm going to ask some people to give their life to Jesus. To say, Pastor, God has spoken to me today. No more turning back. I'm going to move forward. The rest of you, I need you to make sure that these principles are written in your spirit. Inside your heart. That from today, I'm going to live a kingdom life. I'm going to manifest the kingdom of God in my life. You don't know when you die. It could be tonight, it could be tomorrow. Get ready for eternity. Young people are dying, old people are dying, even babies are dying. You have an expiry date on you. I cannot tell when you will pass on. Everybody close your eyes and just talk to God about your life. Say, God, I will live for you the rest of my life, whatever the years might be. It could be 10 years, 20 years. I will live for you. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Now today as we pray with every eyes closed throughout this room. If you are here today and you know God has spoken to you. I'm going to ask you to do something very courageous. I'm going to ask you to stand up on your feet. Don't worry nobody's watching. They are all praying. And it doesn't matter. God said if you are ashamed of me before men. I will be ashamed of you before God my father. If you are here today and God has spoken to you. You may even say, I'm a Christian, but I've not really lived a life. But today, I want to dedicate my life to God as a new beginning. I want to go to heaven. I want my name to be written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to live for God. In the next two minutes, 120 seconds, if you are here, just get up from your feet. And I'm going to pray for you. New beginning. God bless you. Who else is going to do it? God bless you. Don't look at anybody. That is their life. That is their decision. One day the Bible says we will all stand before God and give account. God bless you. Who else is out there? To say, Pastor, I need to change. There are people who came to Jesus and they heard the word of God and nothing happened. They never changed. They went back the same way. Not you. Don't listen to the voice of the devil. That say that don't get up. But if you know God has spoken to you and your heart is pounding, God is knocking on the heart. He said, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If anybody will open me, I will come in. Anybody else in this room? Say, Pastor, pray for me. I want a new life. I have 30 seconds. Who else? Just stand up and say, God, I need you. God bless you. Final call. Five seconds. God bless you. If God, is, if God has not spoken to you, then don't stand up. If he has, thank you all for standing. I want to pray with you. Those of you who are on your feet, just say this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my heart to you. I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life today. Thank you Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. Today. I want to follow you. In Jesus name. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer sincerely. Let me tell you. Your names have been written in the Lamb book of life. Today is a new beginning. Now I want everybody to stand up. I want to pray for you. Everybody stand up. I want to pray for you. 
if you are here and every one of us, if you want to dedicate your life to God, like I want to, just lift up your hands. We all want to dedicate our life to God. Lift up your hands. And as you lift up your hands to God, you are saying, God, I will seek you first. Say it again. I will seek you first. Say it again. I will seek you first. And your righteousness. And all other things will be added to me. Lord, give me the grace to live a life of the kingdom. In Jesus' name. Glory be to God. God bless you. You may be seated.